Okay, this is lesson six, which is on diverging lenses. We're going to look at what happens when you have a lens which causes light to spread out. So a diverging lens, which is also called a concave lens, refracts light in such a way that rays of light which are coming in parallel to the optical axis are bent, and they're bent actually away, and um, they diverge, and they diverge from what appears to be a single point. So we call this a focal point. It's actually a negative focal point because the light is not bending towards it, it's bending away from it. So basically, rays of light which pass through a diverging lens are bent outwards, and they're bent so that they appear to be coming from a single point, which we call a focus point. It's actually an anti-focus point. So that's a diverging lens, and uh, diverging lenses can form images, but they are always virtual images. So some properties of concave or diverging lenses. First of all, they cause light to diverge from an imaginary focal point. The uh, distance this focal point is located from the lens is called the focal length. The focal length is always negative, so when you're solving problems algebraically, you have to remember to use a negative value for the focal length. And diverging lenses always produce virtual images, and the virtual images are always smaller than the original objects. So that's three things that we know about diverging lenses. So let's uh, do a ray diagram of a problem. I've got a 20 centimeter diverging lens. So as soon as I read diverging lens here, I know I'm going to make the focal length negative. So it's going to be negative 20. Um, the object is a 5 centimeter tall candle, which is 40 centimeters from the lens. And I want to know where is the image formed and uh, what is the size of the image. So the first thing I can do is kind of uh, make my optical axis like I've done before. I will draw a lens, and in this case, um, I have a focal length of negative 20 centimeters. The distance to the object is 40 centimeters, and the height of the object is 5 centimeters. So a reasonable scale would be that one block is 4 centimeters in the x direction, and then in the y direction, vertically, one block will be 1 centimeter. So I'll start off by labeling my focal points that are on either side of the lens, just like with a converging lens. And I'll draw my object, which is 40 centimeters or 10 blocks from my lens. So now I'm going to trace my rays of light. And this is where there's a small difference in the way we do this problem from a converging lens. A ray of light which travels parallel to the optical axis is not bent through this focal point, but it's bent away from this focal point. So you're going to take your ruler and line it up on this focal point, And you're going to sketch the ray of light going that way. So the lens bends the ray of light away from this focal point. The second ray of light goes through the center of the lens, and as usual, it is not refracted at all. It uh, passes through without being bent. And then the third one's also a little different. Instead of going through this focal point, because the diverging lenses, the rays don't go through the focal point, I'm going to think about the one that was heading towards this focal point, which is in that direction, and that's the one that's going to get bent parallel. And maybe the easiest way to understand that is if you think about the opposite direction. If the light was coming this way from the light right to the left, it would get bent away from the focal point, so away from this focal point. So the one that's heading towards the far focal point gets bent parallel. So if you look at these three rays of light, clearly they diverge. They are not going to intersect on the right-hand side of the lens. And so what we're going to do is we are going to trace them back to their apparent point of origin. If you saw three rays of light over here going in those directions, you would ask, where do they seem to be coming from? So to do that, you just take each of the rays and you extend it with a dotted line backwards. So this one looks like it's coming from the focal point. This one here looks like it's coming from that direction. And this one here looks like it's coming. You don't have to extend it backwards because it's already drawn there. But you can see that all three of these rays here appear to be diverging from a single point right here. And so we call that a virtual image. We'll draw an image there. It's virtual because the light rays don't actually come from there. They don't actually cross there. They just appear to originate there. And so the object, which is over here, if you're looking through the lens, appears as a smaller object closer to the lens right here. And that's a virtual image. We can then use our scale. This is 4, 8, 12, um, that's 14 in the middle, so that's like 13 and a little bit. Um, so somewhere a little bit bigger than 13 would be the distance to the object, uh, image. And since it's a virtual image, that's a negative distance. 
So the distance to the image would be like negative 13.3, let's say. The height of the image, each block in the vertical direction is one centimeter. So that's one centimeter, that's two centimeters. So that looks like about one and two thirds of a centimeter or maybe 1.75, I'm gonna call it 1.66, uh, one and two thirds of a centimeter tall. And it is upright, so the magnification is positive. So based on my geometric solution, I can say that the height of the image is about 1.6 or 1.7 centimeters. The distance to the image is a little more than 13, and the magnification would be the height of the image, which is about 1.7, divided by the height of the object, which was 5, so that's about 0.33. So the magnification is about one-third. This image is about one-third the size of the original object. So that's how we solve a diverging lens problem. The three rays we care about are the one that's parallel, is bent away from the focal length, the point, the one that heads towards the opposite focal length or focal point is bent parallel and the one through the middle continues unrefracted and then we trace those three back to find the apparent point of origin. So the three rays we're looking at, a ray that's moving parallel to the optical axis is bent away from the negative focal point, a ray passing through the center is not refracted, and a ray heading towards the opposite focal point is bent or refracted parallel to the optical axis. Those are the three uh, principal rays we're going to trace. We can look at an algebraic solution to this problem. We're using the exact same equation, the lens maker's equation. The only difference is, remember, the focal length is negative. So when you use the focal length, instead of 20, you've got to put in negative 20. So we're going to have 1 over negative 20 minus 1 over 40. And then the reciprocal of that answer is the distance to the image. And that's negative 13.3, which agrees very well with our geometric solution. The magnification is minus the distance to the image over the distance to the object. So negative 13.3 divided by 40, which was the distance to the object. And you get a magnification that is positive. This negative cancels that negative, And you get a positive magnification. The image was upright. Lastly, the height of the image you can solve using this equation. Take the magnification times the height of the object and you get 1.66. I think we called it 1.7 from the ray diagram, so 1.66 is in good agreement with that. So we can solve this problem algebraically as well. So in summary, we have a virtual image. We know that because the distance to the image was negative, or from our geometric solution, we know that it's virtual because the light rays didn't cross there. Um, they just appeared to originate there, so it's a virtual image. It's formed a distance of 13.3 centimeters from the lens. It's upright because the magnification is positive, and it's diminished because the absolute value of the magnification is less than one, so it's smaller than the original object. Okay, so what you're gonna do is practice a couple of these on your, uh, on your own, and so that's homework four. So log into homework four, and uh, you're gonna make ray diagrams and uh, solutions showing the uh, ray diagrams for the diverging lenses.